At full afterburner, the MiG-23 doesn't just accelerate at lunges. Its wings sweep back, the engine roars, and suddenly this Cold War fighter is moving faster than many jets designed decades later. But here's the question most people never ask. If the MiG-23 was so controversial, why is it still flying today? This aircraft was called dangerous, unstable, even obsolete. Yet somehow it refused to disappear. The MiG-23 was never meant to be loved. It wasn't built for dogfights or air shows. It was built for one thing, interception at extreme speed. When the Soviet Union introduced it in the late 1960s, this jet represented a radical break from everything that came before. Swing wing technology, high speed radar interception, missile first combat doctrine. On paper, it looked unstoppable. In reality, it became one of the most misunderstood fighters ever built. To understand the MiG-23, you have to understand its enemy. American bombers and fighters flying fast, low, and deep into Soviet airspace. The MiG-21 was agile, but limited. The Soviet Air Force needed something faster, longer ranged, and more adaptable. The answer was variable geometry wings, wide for takeoff and landing, swept back for supersonic interception. Combined with a powerful Tumansky engine and look-down, shoot-down radar, the MiG-23 was designed to strike before the enemy even knew it was there. This wasn't a dogfighter. It was a hunter. But theory and reality didn't always agree. Early MiG-23 variants were unforgiving. High landing speeds, poor visibility, complex handling at low altitude. For inexperienced pilots, mistakes were deadly. Western pilots mocked it. Even Soviet pilots criticized it. And then came combat. In Middle Eastern conflicts, the MiG-23 faced F-15s and F-16s jets, designed for agility, sensors, and pilot awareness. On paper, the MiG-23 was fast. In practice, it struggled when forced into close combat. That reputation stuck and nearly buried the aircraft's legacy. But here's the twist. When flown as designed, the MiG-23 was deadly. At high speed, with radar-guided missiles, it could engage targets long before visual range. Later variants fixed many early flaws better avionics, stronger engines, improved weapons. Western intelligence eventually admitted it. The MiG-23 wasn't bad. It was simply used wrong. And when used correctly, it became one of the fastest climbing, hardest hitting interceptors of its era. Here's what most people don't know. The MiG-23 was exported to over 30 countries. Some still operate it today, not because they can't replace it, but because it still fills a niche. Fast interception, heavy missile load, long reach. Its swing wing design allows it to operate from rough runways. Its speed makes it effective against drones, bombers, and intruders. And in regions without advanced air defenses, the MiG-23 remains a serious threat. The MiG-23 was never meant to win popularity contests. It was built to defend borders, intercept threats, and survive a war that thankfully never came. Its legacy isn't about dogfights, it's about doctrine. Speed over agility, missiles over guns, interception over showmanship. And in today's world of hypersonic threats and unmanned systems, that philosophy suddenly feels familiar again. The MiG-23 isn't a relic. It's a reminder that aircraft are shaped by the wars they expect to fight, not the ones history remembers. If you want the next part, where we compare the MiG-23 to modern interceptors and explain what it still teaches air forces today, make sure you're ready for what comes next.